Hey guys, welcome to Xamarin University and welcome to our AZR 120 class. This is our authenticating our Azure Web Service class. I'm Jason DeBoover. I'm going to be your host for the next little while while we discuss how to add authentication to our Azure app services. The first thing we're going to do is looking at what kind of authentication we can do with our Azure app services. So why even support authentication? What's the point? Well, there's obviously several really, really important things we can do. And in terms of a app service or web service, one of the key points would be to control access to that service. In other words, only certain parties are allowed to directly access my backend data that does things that are specific to my business. Of course, sometimes we want to give only certain types of data to certain users. Imagine the Facebook app, right? It only gives your posts to you. Other people can see other posts. So by authenticating you, by finding out who you are, it knows what posts to give. Same thing with our, for instance, Azure portal. Of course, I'm able to administer certain websites and certain APIs. When I log in to my Azure portal, I'm given access to those APIs and to those web service admin consoles. Of course, I shouldn't have access to control yours. So by me logging in, Azure knows which admin consoles to give me rights to. And of course, we can also use authentication to make sure that data is genuine, that the author of the data is that person who has the particular certificates. Now, let's focus more on just Azure authentication though. So when we're authenticating to Azure, we're going to use OAuth. This is an industry standard, very, very common. Uh, we do have some other classes specific to OAuth. We have some lightning lectures specific to OAuth, so feel free to check those out as well. Azure leverages that, and so it's going to be comfortable and familiar to a lot of you who've worked with it in other areas before. And we're going to start with our client. So our client is going to be the one that's interested in getting some information from an Azure web service. We, of course, have the Azure web service itself. This is going to be known in the parlance of authentication as the resource. This is the thing that we need rights to get at. We need rights to access. We call this the resource. And then finally, we have the thing that's going to authenticate. This is basically the thing that holds the username and password, and we call that our identity provider. In documentation all over the place, you'll see this abbreviated as IDP. So get comfortable and familiar with that abbreviation. Now, Azure doesn't just work with its own username and password stores. If it did, it probably wouldn't even necessarily need to worry about OAuth. One of the great things about OAuth is it allows different resources, resource providers like Azure or like your web service that's hosted on Azure, to use third-party providers as their IDPs or identity providers. So Azure supports Google+, Plus. it supports Microsoft accounts, which are slightly separate from actual Azure accounts. It supports Facebook and Twitter. And then it also supports Active Directory. And Active Directory actually is what Azure is using for its own authentication. And so in that respect, we actually can kind of directly integrate. We could have our app service protected with the same active directory that we ourselves use to log in and administer our Azure console. This is actually really common if your web service is just meant for internal VPN use or internal use with your, your own organization's employees. But of course, there are alternatives as well. You can have multiple active directory instances within Azure. Um, you can even have your own corporate active directory, the thing that you log into your own your own organization's network with. You could have that tied together if you were using an Office 365 subscription. Furthermore, Azure also supports Active Directory B2C. Um, this is actually a form of our Active Directory offering that's meant explicitly to host external users. And it's what you would use if you had, for instance, an external website, a website that, that, that allows regular users people who are not employees of your organization. So regular users can just register for your website and you may get 10,000, 100,000, a million users. Well, Active Directory B2C is built for scaling with those kind of users and also providing kind of a, a logical firewall of keeping them outside of, of your user organization that you use for employees or privileged users. So B2C is great for that sort of thing, for external users and from building the infrastructure for you, 
so that you don't have to maintain username, password, databases, and all that stuff yourself. It handles that part for you. So we can also, being OAuth supporters, actually allow you to create your own IDP. Um, you might do this through something like Auth0, which is a third party uh, company that will allow you to do things like aggregate identity providers. Identity Server is another third party open source piece of software. I've actually got a lightning lecture on implementing an identity server in your own ASP.NET environment. So if you're interested in creating your own identity provider, then you can check out that lightning lecture. By the way, this is another link here talking about setting up an Auth0 environment. So you can check that link out. Let's take a look at the options we have available to us. If we need enterprise authentication, of course, Active Directory. If we're going to be using a social provider and only one social provider, we'll simply tell Azure, use Twitter. And we'll set up our Twitter keys and all that stuff. And we'll actually look at doing that later in this class. And that's really all there is to it. It's actually very simple. Now, here it says if you want to use multiple social providers. Specifically, what we mean is if we're going to have the user, as part of what we'll later call the server flow, decide which social provider. Um, it is actually possible to use multiple social providers in the same way that we'll talk about in this line item here. But you can also use some sort of aggregator uh, that'll save you the work of having to do some of that client-side code for, for helping the user decide but it is possible to use multiple social providers in either situation. This just saves you some work at the cost of some customization. Finally, if you don't want to store your own username and passwords, but you do want to manage your own users, Azure Active Directory B2C is a great way to do that.